Hi, and welcome to another Five Minutes with Harold Feld, the place where we take really insanely boring and wonky stuff and try to make it slightly less boring because this stuff is important. We're celebrating here. <coughs> and why are we celebrating? Because you remember that big broadband stimulus package that got passed back in the... Uh, January that was going to bring $7.2 billion and revolutionize uh, how we do broadband in this country. The Department of Commerce and the RUS and the other agencies that are going to be involved finally agreed on something and they all released their notice of application. But if you were expecting to get 100 megabits of fiber uh, everywhere in the country, forget about it. Of course, that was never really in the cards. Some people had some inflated expectations about how this was going to work. Instead, as is usual uh, in a policy fight, there's a lot of good news and there's some bad news. In this case, frankly, I think on the policy fronts, we got a hell of a lot more good news than bad news, but it's going to be incremental, not revolutionary. So let's run through some of the good things. For those of us who care about network neutrality, we ratcheted it up another notch. We got the fifth principle that everybody's been talking about, non-discrimination, included as one of the things that applicants have to agree to if they're going to take public money to provide broadband. We also got something that we hadn't seen in a long time, which is interconnection. The Notice of Financial Availability, or NOFA, requires that if you build out uh, using this money, you are going to have to agree to allow other people to connect to your broadband network. You'll have to negotiate fair market prices. There's no price control. Uh, it's not uh, a tightly regulated system. We also brought back one of the rules that we used to have and one of the rules that they actually have adopted in places like Europe that has allowed them to leapfrog over us in terms of getting higher speeds, better prices, and more competition on broadband. So putting interconnection back into the broadband debate, making that something that uh, we can now talk about openly for the first time and not sound like radical socialists, big win. Hooray! On the other hand, they also introduced for the first time something called managed services. That's you can take the portion of the pipe that you're building out and have a portion of that capacity dedicated to a service that is not open and is not part of the, quote, public internet. Now, the examples they give are things like telemedicine, uh, where they've been saying for a long time, we got to be able to offer a high quality of service and be able to make this happen. The reality is, what this means is IPTV and VoIP. This is part of, this is inevitably going to be a triple play combination from a lot of providers who are now going to be able to build out and say, okay, this part of the fiber pipe is for the public internet connection. This part of the fiber pipe is where I privilege my voice over IP service as a managed service. And this part of the pipe is where I privilege my IPTV service as a managed service. So that's kind of less good. What looks like a loss on the speed side actually isn't as bad as it uh, looks on the surface. The speed they picked for the definition of broadband is 768 kbps, which is what the FCC uses now. A lot of people are disappointed in that because they were looking for this to push the speed up a real notch. But the, uh, what we have is a political compromise. The wireless guys have said we can't do terrestrial wireless at the speeds that people want to see, something that would be really upping the, yeah, really kicking it up, you know, 20 megabits per second or better. Instead, what we have is this is a minimum, and you get extra points if you exceed the minimum substantially. So what that means is if we're talking about wireless in rural areas, you're not going to be disqualified because the best you can do is a 1.5 megabit connection, uh, which is equivalent to uh, you know, a decent DSL connection in an urban area. On the other hand, if you're putting in for fiber, if you can bring fiber and touch all the other bases in the NOFA, you're going to do a hell of a lot better. So there's a lot of incentive in there for people to kick the speed up as much as they can, while at the same time not excluding the projects that are are uh, very worthy projects for serving unserved areas, uh, but which are just not going to be able to meet the speeds that we think everybody ought to be entitled to. The reasonable network management exception includes keeping people from getting to illegal content. So 
it's still feasible for companies like AT&T, if they were to win this, to try to put in some kind of copyright filtering system, even if it's not mandated that they put in uh, a copyright uh, filtering system. So win against mandates, but still got a long way to go to keep people from filtering internet content for what they think are supposed to be good causes. Another big victory here is that the NOFA recognizes the importance of middle mile, which includes things like backhaul uh, that have been holding up deployment in a lot of areas. Uh, there's a tremendous uh, recognition of the need for this, and given that a lot of the money in the first round is going for uh, uh, infrastructure, I think we're going to see some significant investment in middle mile. That's a good news. The bad news in this round is that a lot of the more innovative programs around public computing centers, uh, innovative programs for adoption, and other digital inclusion, digital divide initiatives are getting a very small amount of money in the first round. On the other hand, that may not be such a bad thing. The applications are going to be due in 45 days, and that's not a hell of a lot of time uh, to get uh, applications together that have real community involvement and innovative programs. So. While I'm certainly uh, hoping that this administration lives up to the vision and the statute, which takes a more sophisticated view of the broadband ecology and includes things like digital inclusion, uh, the fact is that it may not be such a bad idea to wait for the next round before we move on to some of the more inventive things. The bottom line is that we are going to see some good things coming out of this. I think it's an important step forward. I think the Obama administration is doing their best and trying to turn the tide on the last eight years of really, really crappy broadband policy. But you don't change this stuff overnight, and it's going to be more incremental than trans wildly transformative, and we're still going to be fighting for our broadband future for the foreseeable future.